Can this affordable drone handle South Padre Island's winds? Let's find out. Today I want to test out the Ruko F11 GIM2 drone. Many of you have asked for my opinion on which drone to buy, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to test a product other than DJI. It only cost about $460, so I'm going to consider it an entry-level drone from a price standpoint. The company sent it to me for review, but I plan on providing you with an honest opinion, so let's get into it. I'm gonna leave the unboxing and spec explainer to the end of the video. I know most of you are interested in how it actually shoots and if it works out here at the beach. I've never flown it, so let's see if I don't lose it to the ocean. If you guys are used to the DJI, you know, drones and, and you know how you, know how you uh, uh, go ahead and bring this out, and normally you would put your phone right here, not in this one. These, this is just a handle pretty much right here. These are handles, okay? Your phone goes up here, and you don't put a, uh, a cable to the controller. Basically, you just put your phone over here and it connects to the controller via Wi-Fi, okay? These are the antennas, so go ahead and bring them out, like so, okay? And now we're gonna go ahead and grab the phone. And by the way, I already took the liberty of downloading the app, all right, and uh, you can get that at, at your uh, on your app store. But you can also, as you can see right here, it also comes with these. Uh, it also comes with these manuals, and there's going to be a QR code down in here where you can just go ahead and you know download it from there. They got it for uh, for either Android or for your iOS device. So here's my Ruko app right here. I'd already downloaded it, but first I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, and put this on the thing right here. Let me go ahead and open it. Now, check this out, guys. Most apps, usually when you do this right here, they conform to the position of your device, not this one. So it's gonna force you, like in my uh, iPhone, it forces me to have to set it up this way, okay? It's not gonna go back and forth. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Now we're gonna go ahead and power it up by pressing it twice. Okay, let's go ahead and confirm because we're gonna have to make sure that it is connected. Now, one thing I failed to tell you, all right, let me go ahead and turn this on. But you know what, I don't wanna get this this is pretty much how it unfolds right here. And it does come with a little gimbal cover, as you can see. Let's go ahead and remove that. This pretty much just protects it. So you can chunk that, you're not gonna need that. But you know what? I don't want to mess this thing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my helicopter pad just to make sure that the sand does not get into it and I'm gonna be okay. Let me do that first. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna set it up over here first just so I have a nice, clean place to start off with. So at this point, it's already trying to connect. Downloaded this app. Now let me show you. I'm gonna go ahead and press this. At this point, let's go ahead and move it over here. So it's searching for it, but I'm gonna show you, this is a little different because normally, you know, with the other DJIs or other conventional drones that I've owned, you know, you usually put this little, uh, you put the connector right here and it connects to the controller. In this one right here, it's through Wi-Fi, and there is the Ruko, okay? I turned on, I turned on the drone, but first I turned on the controller, turned on the drone, and then I went, to the settings in my phone, and that's where I found it, okay? So there's my Ruko right there. Now I can go back to the app. As you can see right here, it's got, you know, the F11 series. There's a GIM2 and the GIM1 
Obviously, the model that I have is the GIMP 2. So I already picked that, all right? There's a GIMP 2. And then I'm gonna go to my controls, all right? And it's gonna give you all of these you know, guides that you can go ahead and, I mean, it's, I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and, and review them just so you can get to study them. But you can also skip, okay? And it'll teach you, you know, how to, you know, go ahead and, and set it up and, and fly it and the proper uh, instructions. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that as well. All right, hit next, unfold the antennas, which I already did, enter the mobile Wi-Fi bar, which I already did. Now we're gonna rotate the, we're gonna rotate it. This is calibrating the drone, and now you do it like this, and then you do it horizontally, okay? I'm trying to do it with one hand, it's kind of difficult, you know? See here. So, I have to put this down, but you have to do it this way, and then you have to do it vertically as well, okay? So once you do it like that, then you're gonna go ahead and put it back on a level surface, all right? And let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna position it this way. As you can see, it's already you can already see the screen right there. And how do you record? You can do a video with this right button, or you can do a still photograph with a left one, all right? At this point, you can already see that we have, not the satellites, but you can see that the signal is strong, okay? You can see the, the battery, okay, power. And now we're gonna try to go ahead and launch it. So I think there's two ways of launching it. One of them is gonna be if you bring it down and then in. As you can see, it's powered on. Now let's go ahead, in order to elevate the drone, we're gonna go ahead and just move this left toggle up. There it is. I'm gonna start recording video. There we are. Let me see. If we can switch around. Now remember, this is the very first time I fly this drone. I'm, I'm recording it. Check it out. Going back there. And now, look at this, honey, right here. You see with this right here, you can control the gimbal. So there's my buddy Ray, and there we are. And then we can go ahead and, you know, do it this way. Oh, this is nice and smooth, man. I like it so far. I am impressed. Now, check it out, honey. See if you can see the, can you spot the drone? It's really far up there. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and bring it back in. Now, I don't know if it's at a certain, if it's at a certain, let me see here. I'm sure that there's, uh, there's some, gonna be some settings here where you can go ahead and use it you know, to run it in like sports mode or maybe smoother. And please, my apologies for my, this is the very first time I use this drone. And so I'm trying to, trying to figure out the controls are a little different. So let me see if I can do a little, little spin move maneuver here. This is one of my favorite maneuvers that I like to do. That looks good. Yes. Very nice. The winds out here are always very strong, so I just want to see how it's going to handle them. Let me go ahead and turn this around. 
and uh, let me do like a little shoreline run. Let's see how far it goes, or at least how far it goes where I can still see it. There we go, man. It's, it's nice and smooth. There's no jitteriness. There's nothing weird. I can barely see it out there. And I don't feel any resistance or anything like that. Okay, so I brought it to a stop. And it's holding steady. The gimbal's very, man, it's very nice. Now let me do a little pan to the left. See how that works. Hey guys, yeah, I like this. This is not bad. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Now let's take it to a higher elevation. All right. We're going to elevate it. By the way, I did, um, I do have this. You have the selection where you can, you can choose if you want to read it in meters or if you want to read it however you want to read it. Um, if you want metric or if you want imperial uh, readings it's got zoom right here by by doing this forward you can go ahead and zoom it this is a digital zoom guys as you can see it looks kind of crappy i don't i don't i don't like that digital zoom all right if i was you i'd just get close to my subject instead but by doing this out here i can go ahead and bring it out let me fly it forward and let me see if it can withstand the winds because remember, the winds are much, much stronger up there. I can't see because of the glare on the, in the sun. Oh, man, this is really nice. And it's shooting right now in 4K, 30 frames per second. Okay, oops. I keep wanting to use that other zoom because that's kind of like how my other, my other drone is set up. We've been recording for quite a while, and... Man, look at that. Isn't that smooth? Let's go ahead and move it this way. Get a nice panoramic shot. I mean, we're going to have to download the video at home and, and see how it looks on the screen. And you guys will be able to judge and tell me if it's good enough quality for you. Nice. So now let's bring it down. Well, let me go ahead and uh, bring down the gimbal. And uh, let me see if I can find my truck. There we are. Let's go ahead and bring it down. Trying to bring a smooth situation here. Still coming down. Can't really see. I mean, I'm, it's it's noon, so the quality of the picture is going to be a little. Don't judge it because it is not the it's not the golden hour. I'll try to fly the drone again later on this afternoon, when our camp is when our camp is uh, ready to go. Like I said, the controllers could be more responsive, but I think it's really because of uh, the way I have it set up. No cars coming. Let me go ahead and turn it around. Let's see if we can land it right here. Now I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna fly it back again. Remember, this thing does not have uh, an obstacle. Whoop. That wasn't the smoothest of the smoothest, but hey, I tried it out. Whoa. Okay, you have to bring it down. Now it's off. I want to test to see if I hit the auto uh, land button. Let's see if how, if, with, with what proximity it's going to land on the, uh, the pad. I didn't want to do it over here because as you can see, the, I put the pad a little too close to the vehicles, 
And what if it's not accurate? It can, it can hit the, the, the vehicle. So let's go ahead and put it somewhere else. Now I went ahead and I landed it. And as you can see, it's, it's closer to the dunes. It's away from the vehicles. And I did that on purpose because I want to test a couple of features out. So it's supposed to have an auto launch. So let's see how this works. You press the auto launch. Please unlock and take off. So slide to start the motors. All right, let's go do that. Actually, it did it. So it now says take off. Hey, it works. That's a good thing. All right, so it's at that level. Let's go ahead and fly it up. Let's get it closer. Oh, let me start recording here. Let's start uh, getting it a little closer to the dunes. All right. We're now in this area. Let me turn it around. I don't want to send it too far away because I don't want to have to climb over those dunes or anything. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the, the landing. So let me see what this does. Please confirm return. Please ensure the landing position of the aircraft is safe. And uh, so let's see if this will return it. You know, okay, so avoid falling into the water or the top of a building to prevent aircraft from being lost. Uh, yeah, I gotcha. So let's go ahead and do that. Here it comes. Let's see if it does it on its own. Let's see if it remembers. And let's see the proximity. Is it going to remember? Is it going to do it? Okay, I guess it's remembering. It's repositioning. It's going down. But let's see how close it can get to that kilo pad and it's not okay well I don't want it to touch the sand so I'm gonna bring it back manually I'm doing this ma oh shoot yeah it doesn't it doesn't do it right on top of the pad unfortunately there's 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 the calibration is not that exact okay but still that was pretty neat so now I can tell you a little bit more about this thing so we tested those features out but one thing I almost forgot was that this thing does have some tracking features but in order to do that I'm gonna see if I can screen record let me see if I can screen record and see if I can go ahead and show you I don't know if the camera is picking up the screen my wife tells me but uh, I'm gonna try so I'm already on screen record here and as you can see, it's got a little joystick off to the left. So let's go ahead and hit that. And then when you hit that, you can see that it's got image follow, GPS follow, and music, VR, lens angle, point of interest, um, you know, gestures. You know, so you can go ahead and control the drone with gestures. Uh, or you can ask it to record using the palm, you know. Um, and it's got route rules and a bunch of other features that you will you probably by now you've grown accustomed to with most of your drones out there so let's go ahead and get this up on the up in the air first so first I'm gonna launch it go ahead and uh, let's see let's get it off the, off the ground so there it is ready to take off Hit the takeoff. As you can see, it's hovering right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to a certain height. Move it forward. Just enough to where you can capture us right here. Off to the left-hand side, you're going to see a little joystick. You hit that, and you're going to have several options. You're going to have image follow, GPS follow, and a bunch of other things. So I'm going to go ahead and um, hit the image follow, slide to the right, and I'm going to draw a little square around me, and let me see if uh, that's going to follow me around, okay? So let me walk this way. It seems to be following me. I just don't like, look at where I am. 
yeah, it's, it's pointing my way, but I'm off the dang screen. I don't like that. That I do not like, okay? I, I'm walking back into it, and it seems to be capturing me. But I wish I was in the center of the position. Hopefully, there will be some sort of firmware or something that will fix that. Or maybe I'm doing something wrong. But it was able to stay with me. Okay, now I'm going to walk towards the water and see if it follows me. Let's see if it will tilt up. And it's not. Okay, it's not doing it. It won't tilt up. So let me let me try a different. Let me try a different type of. Uh, we're gonna try a different type of, of feature here. Let's see how that works. Okay, so let me go ahead and eliminate, the image and let's see what GPS follow does. Okay, so that's GPS follow, and let me walk around. Let me see what happens there. Let's see if GPS follow is any different. Uh, no, it's, it's struggling. It's struggling to, to get with me. I'm walking to the drone. Let me see what it does. Let me see what happens if I go under the drone. Oh, it lost me. So let me get, let me go back. No, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not doing something right, but I'm not, I'm not too crazy about these features. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with, maybe later on I'll try, I'll try to test that out, but I don't know. I'm not very convinced as to how this is operating, at least not these features. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, bring it down over here. So this is what you get with your purchase. You obviously get a drone equipped with a 4K 3-axis gimbal and brushless motors, an extra set of propellers, two rechargeable batteries with USB-C cables, a Wi-Fi controller that you use with your phone, a nice carrying case, and your user manuals. You won't need a special battery charger for your batteries or controllers since they both use USB-C cables. You will need to purchase your own micro SD card. The Ruko will accept up to 128 gigabytes. Ruko claims a three kilometer range, but I am a believer in line of sight flying, so I didn't test the range to the max. It's also a federal law requirement to keep the drone in sight. Ruko claims a 28 minute flight time per battery, but that is going to depend on the wind conditions and your flying habits. So what is my general opinion on this Ruko F11 GIM2? I think a first time drone owner who wants to gain flying experience may find this to be the right fit. You won't spend a fortune, so if you have a catastrophic fail, it won't be the end of the world. The video and photographs are good enough for social media clips and perfect for capturing an aerial perspective on your vacation. Once you feel comfortable flying and you are ready to drop two or three times the money, then you can feel more confident. I am a licensed commercial UAV pilot, so the Ruko will be a great backup drone for me. However, the quality doesn't rival my more high-end drone. As far as options, I think the DJI Mini 2, which is priced similarly, may be something to look into. However, the drone is smaller, so it may have a harder time flying in stronger winds. One other thing to note is that these less expensive drones have no obstacle avoidance features. I personally don't think that's a deal breaker, but it's important to know. So what did you think about the Ruko? Drop your questions or comments down below. I will add a link to the drone down in the video description if you are interested. Thanks for watching and get up, get out, do something.